directly below me. I can feel it right here in the floor. What the hell could that be? Hey, welcome back to the shop. I'm Jason, and today we are chasing an annoying noise. I, uh, I can also make very annoying noises. On Bertha. And Bertha is my 2020 F350 long bed. Now for the most part, this truck is stock. As far as suspension mods, it's not leveled, it's not lifted, it's not anything. I do have a Hellwig big wig sway bar on the rear. I have uh, Firestone manual control airbags and then Bilstein 5100s all around, including the stabilizer. Now, including the stabilizer, I'm saying purposefully because I don't have death wobble. However, the front end does wander a little bit and I climbed under there this week and I had my son swinging the steering wheel back and forth and I could feel movement in the ball joints on the drag link. So in a future episode, I think I'm going to be addressing that. Not sure what I'm going to address it with. I've been looking at the Kryptonite products and those look freaking awesome. So, hey, Kryptonite, if you guys get a hold of this video or somebody sends it to you, I'd love to test out your products. I have a perfect use case scenario right here. This truck has 36,000 miles on it. I put the Bilsteins on because I went through two factory shocks, um, had two blow and I was like, all right, I'm done with this. I went straight Bilstein and then, uh, the airbags and the rear sway bar are because I haul or I was hauling a 15,000 pound fifth wheel and I do have a 10,000 pound enclosed trailer, race trailer for my BMW, which is currently taken apart over there, awaiting eh, more fun stuff for the fall racing season. So having worked in the dealership network many, many moons ago, I am very used to customers, or I was very used to customers coming and saying, hey, I have this funny noise in my car. And then as I'm looking to diagnose this problem, I would find some rinky dink, chinky wink, something floating around in the car making the noise that they could have just taken out. Crap, 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 crap. So the first step is to take everything out of the bed of the truck. The noise feels like it's coming from below my feet and behind me. It sounds that way too, but my hearing sucks. So I'm not gonna count on that more than I can count on the feel. Taking everything out of the back of the truck, keeping it simple. Well, the fact that I'm here telling you I'm going to do that means that that wasn't the problem. So we're gonna continue on, dig in and see what there is back there. So to duplicate the noise, all I have to do is gently swing the truck back and forth. And if, when I turn to the right, I can hear it on my left, which means the body is loading up that direction. So the things that I'm going to look at, I'm going to start by looking at the body mounts underneath and see if anything looks odd. I've seen reports of people saying that they have found loose mounts from the factory. I'm going to look at the bed bolts. I have the Ford spray and bed liner, so I don't think that those are the issue because none of them have broken free and they spray it in after they torque the bolts down. That doesn't mean it's not the issue. And I'm gonna look at my sway bar, which I might look at first because potentially there's a link popping on there. So right here, there's some squeaks in the cab, but definitely not the pop. You have to unload it. So turn right, turn left, and then I can hear it happening back there. So I suppose first thing, I'm gonna trade with my filmographer here, and I'm gonna get in the back seat, lay on the floor, and see if I can hear the noise more acutely down there. I do have a separate microphone back there right now, uh, just below the seat, so that when I review the footage, I might be able to hear it. All right, so we're in the back seat. I don't actually fit between the seat and the floor, even with how gigantic this car is. So I'm on my knees. I'm gonna stick my head in the corner here by the door. Ow. And I'm just gonna listen. Oh, geez. It's like this a one ton truck or something bouncing all over the place. Do you hear it? I can't hear it again. So it sounds like it's behind me. 
like that way towards the bed. That means I'm gonna have to go in the bed. All right, I've got my bed made here in the bed of the truck. It's a paltry 92 degrees this morning here in Phoenix. This sucks, it's hot, it's uncomfortable. Let's go for a drive and see what we can hear. Laying down. All right. So what I'm looking for is to hear is the sound ahead of the axle here or is it behind the axle potentially? Or directly below me, I can feel it right here in the floor. What the hell could that be? This is ahead of the axle. Let's move around a little. Whoa, what the hell was that? Did I have it wrong the whole time? Is it on the right side? All right, that was right below my head. Here, oh shit, there it was again. Above the axle. It's time to start disconnecting stuff. I'm gonna start with the sway bar. I know it seems silly, but always start with whatever aftermarket things you have. This doesn't feel like the bed to me at all, making the noise. It feels like it's connected to the frame right here along where the frame bolts are to the bed. So following suit with keeping it simple, we're gonna check the sway bar link first, which is right here up to the frame. I see behind there. You can see everything is wet because I like to throw a little WD-40 on all my hardware, especially anything adjustable or aftermarket. Um, whenever I'm servicing the truck, I do have, like I said, airbags back here, but I have them on a cup, so they're not physically connected top to bottom. I have had these Firestone brackets loose before, and initially I thought it was because of the axle collapse issue and i have not had the work done on my axle because i'm not willing to leave my truck there for two months at a time until it breaks and i'm screwed and then we'll deal with it right so oh yeah i can shake the hell out of that and nothing is happening doesn't seem like that would be the concern then reaching under here i got nothing no movement no movement there but that doesn't mean that this bushing or bushing up there isn't making the noise. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna disconnect this lower bushing and we'll zip tie it forward here to the bracket on the bottom of the fuel tank skid plate. And then we'll drive it again, see if it makes any noise this time. So before we go just removing things, I am gonna check some bolts. I'm gonna check this upper bracket bolt, which is significantly tight. Okay, feel pretty good about that. Oh, there is a little movement out of this one. How about here. Oh, look at that. That's that's a little wiggles. Maybe we'll start with tightening. Nope. 17, it just doesn't want to go on there. All right, so I looked up the torque specs on the end link and I already torqued the upper bolt. It's 50 to 60 foot pounds and the bottom is 30 to 40 foot pounds. So I took the upper bolt to 50, it was at like 35. It must have backed off. In the instructions, I'll throw her up on the screen, it says to regularly check these things. Well, I guess they weren't joking because this one, it's loose too. I'm only showing like 18 foot pounds right there. So I got a ways to go to tighten this one up. There it is. And it's compressing, it would seem, because I hit that torque spec and I'm still going. There it is. All right, 40 on this side, 
We'll go to the other side, torque that, and then we're gonna go for another drive. This one's on the other side. Well, that means it's test drive time. So I've got no noise, which is great. Also sucks that it was basically my own fault. Like I said, the instructions say to periodically check these bolts. And I haven't thrown a torque wrench on these, but I have gone and I've shook them and made sure that they weren't loose. They weren't loose to the touch by any means. And if, if I were to guess what's happened here is over time, the bushings compressed under that initial torque. I know I did torque them initially. I torque everything to whatever spec it calls for. Um, so it happens. I'm not concerned about it. This certainly wasn't a defect of the product or the manufacturing. This was me. So I hope that you got a little bit out of this video and even just looking for a noise, things to check, why you would check them. Always remember to keep it simple. It's probably something you did. It, it may not be though, obviously. There are issues with these trucks that people have uh, come to find with the bolts being loose in the bed, the cab bolts coming loose or not being torqued from the factory. This was a, uh, Cerveza virus built truck. So it could have had issues being built in 2020. I really haven't had any pressing issues with it other than the shock uh, blowing out twice. And now with the front drag link um, starting to feel a little bit of popping noise in it. Uh, that isn't the, the track rod that has the 400 foot pounds of torque. The drag link has significantly less torque and I can feel the popping in the bushing or in the ball joints. So if you have recommendations for me, what drag link, what tie rods, what uh, track bars I should put on here, um, CJC Off-Road or Kryptonite or any one of the brands, tell me why down in the description. Let everybody else know too, because there's a lot of folks with these trucks that need to fix these issues, preferably before you run into the death wobble, which when I go to fix this, we'll talk about in further detail. Like, subscribe, comment. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.